Continuing on with model based definition, I've got my part back open and at the bottom of the screen I can see my different combination states. So I've got my five datums and I can see that this has my different datum feature symbols. And I've got 7a and this is where I am documenting some of the important characteristics of the front face of the part. Let's go to 7B. Here's where I'm working on the bottom surface, and I see that I want some more different uh, dimensions located on there. And 7C. Oh, one thing I noticed, I've got the wrong orientation in here. I forgot to set that before I completed my combination state. So let's take care of that right now. I can orient the model the way that I want it to appear for this particular combination state. And then when I go to the annotate tab, I can click update and it'll update this combination state with the new orientation that I have defined. And I realize 7B again is where I want to get some additional dimensions on here. And maybe I don't have those dimensions that I want in my various features, so I can create them manually. And the way that you do that is from the annotate tab and in the annotations group, we have a dimensions command. And when you click on it, you get this select reference dialog box that will help you select what you want. And if I go to this drop down list, by default, it has select entity highlighted. And that is going to prefer edges in your model to select. For example, I can select, hey, I want a dimension from this edge. And I'll hold down the control key and select this other edge and then middle mouse button, and I realized, oh wait, whatever the active annotation plane was, that's not what I want. So let's cancel out of there and select this and delete it. You always want to set your annotation plane before you start creating your different annotations. If I hover my mouse over front, I can see, oh yeah, that's not what I wanted to use. Top, okay, the viewing direction is opposite, so I probably want to use bottom. So let's change to that and go back to dimension. And just like before, I'll pick my first reference and hold down the control key and select the second reference and middle mouse button and I get my dimension on here. And I realize that the dimension text orientation is not the way that I want. So I'm going to hit the middle mouse button to get out of the dimension ribbon on the tab, or excuse me, dimension tab on the ribbon that was open at the top of the screen. And I can select this dimension and then hold down the right mouse button and choose change orientation. And I want to change the viewing direction. So I can choose the text rotation drop down list. Let's try 90 degrees. Oh, yeah, that looks good. That's what I want. And I can click OK. And one note about the plane in which this dimension is displayed. I'm using the bottom plane, which happens to be the right location, but the dimension will be placed on the plane determined by the first reference. I selected this edge, and so that is why this dimension is located on the plane that it's located. Let's create a, another dimension. So again, I will go to the dimension command, and I want a dimension for the width of this tab. So Rather than selecting edges, I can also change this to select surfaces. Although you can select edges, surfaces tend to be more stable references. So you might want to use those if you can. Let's choose select reference and I can say, hey, you know, I want a dimension from this surface and I'm going to hold down the control key as I, after I rotate the model and select this surface over here and I will middle mouse button and by default it's getting me the dimension from the center of the surfaces to center and in this case I can go to the display drop down list and I will actually want the maximum dimension I can change that for both and that way I'm actually getting the actual width of the tabs from one to the other and just like before I realized hey my dimension has the wrong orientation let me right mouse click and hold and choose change orientation and from the drop down list I can try 90 degrees like before and I realized by changing this particular one I'm actually changing what I'm getting in terms of the dimension and that's not what I want at all so this is a situation in which I'd want to set up my annotation plane to begin with. 
Let's go to the Annotation Planes drop-down list and choose Annotation Plane Manager. And I'm going to create a new annotation plane like we did in another video. And when I create one that's specific to a combination state, I like to give it the name of the combination state. And we could use the named model orientation and then use 90 from here. And that way I would end up getting my text located the way that I wanted to. Alternatively, I could select the radio button for reference plane and pick that bottom surface of the model if I didn't have a named model orientation that was the correct way I wanted the dimension to appear. So let's click OK and close out of here. And when I highlight over 7B, you can see that that is indeed the active annotation plane. If I, oops, let's go back to the annotation tab. And if I go to the drop-down list, if I realize that, you know, I really don't need this bottom one in here anymore, I can right-click and remove it from the gallery. And that doesn't delete it. It just removes it from display in here. I can always go back to the Annotation Planes, Annotation Plane Manager, and here's bottom, and I can turn its display back on. All right, for this new annotation that I want to create, let's again go to the Dimension tab, and I still have Select Surface. And I can select the first surface, hold down the control key after I rotate the model, select the second surface, and then middle mouse button. And just like before, let's change this to max and max. And that way we have the dimension that I want. And let me drag it so it snaps being in the middle. Let's take a look at some of the other different options in here. So first off, going on the ribbon from left to right, here we have references, and this will list the different surfaces that we're using. And the strong button indicates that it is using this as a strong reference. So if something happens to that surface, it can actually cause the annotation to fail. Uh, next up, we have in here the value tab, and here is the name of the created dimension. When you create dimensions by default, they're going to get a name with the letter A followed by the letter D followed by a number. Now we have tolerance, tolerances grayed out. I don't like that, and I realize that I have my tall display turned off. Let's get out of here, and I'm going to turn it back on. I'll go to File, Options. Configuration Editor, and I have happen to have it in my config.profile, and for some reason I have tall display set to no. I want to change that to yes, and then click OK, and it asks me if I want to save it in my file. Yes, I do. I want to make sure that it's on whenever I pull up stuff by default. And now when I click on the 2.25, I do have access to my tolerances, and if I wanted to, I could set this to let's say plus minus symmetric, and that way it adds the tolerance in here. And if I needed this to be a little tighter, I could change the value. Oops, let's select the dimension. And let's also choose to go to three decimal places, and that way I get it out to the value. Uh, sometimes you might want to turn off this round dimension depending on what you have out to a number of significant di digits. So that is good for tolerance. Here we have precision. Uh, for the tolerance precision, right now it's set to same as dimension. In this case here, maybe I want this out to two decimal places, but the tolerance for the uh, precision I want out to three decimal places. There we go. Here we have controls over the text orientation. Here we have horizontal, vertical, parallel, perpendicular to, another way of changing that. Uh, again, we already set our max attachment. Let's take a look at the display tab. And from the display tab in here, if you wanted to specify this as an inspection dimension, it'll end up getting that pillbox shape around it. From the dimension text tab, we can add in prefixes and suffixes. And here's the dimension text. So for example, maybe I want to manually put in here two, and then capital X and a space. And that way we get that indicating that this is located in two different places. Next up, the dimension format. If you wanted to, you could display this as a fractional dimension instead, but that looks odd. Let's go back to a regular dimension. 
Then we have dual dimensions and everything here is grayed out. Let me show you how to turn dual dimensioning on. And first I'm going to move this so it's no longer overlapping on my geometry. For turning on dual dimensioning, you can go to File, Prepare, and then Model Properties. And this is an icon that I use so often. Rather than doing all those clicks, finding it underneath this menu, I like to have it in the Quick Access Toolbar. And in the Model Properties dialog box, you can scroll down to Detail Options and then click the Change button. And in the third group of options, I'm just going to collapse the first two, we can scroll down. You can see that we have dual dimensioning in here. And right now, dual dimensioning is set to No. Let's change it so that we're going to have our primary unit and then our secondary unit in parentheses. You can see that your other choices are listing the secondary dimension first and then having the primary dimension or only using a secondary dimension. Let's go to primary secondary and my dual secondary units is set to millimeters. That's fine. Let's, oops, let's change this to primary secondary and click add change and then click apply and then close out of here and close and now when I select this particular dimension I have dual dimensioning turned on and right now it's listed below or you could change it to displaying to the right and that way all my different dimensions are showing up in here and I can see that's using the comma decimal place if you go back to that model properties and then click the change button for your detail options. You can change what you're using as your decimal marker. For that, I decide that I don't want to have that dual dimensioning turned on. So again, we can go back to our model properties and say, hey, detail options, and let's find that dual dimensioning and turn that to no, and then add change. I like to hit apply and then close and then close. And now we are back to the way that we were before. Let's select this dimension one more time. And so the last thing I want to show you in options is that you have the ability to designate these different dimensions. And designating dimensions has the same effect as de designating parameters. It makes them available in Windchill. And you could also designate this as a control characteristic. And if you're using MPM link, then this control characteristic would be available in uh, process plan so that you could allocate them in different inspection steps. And this is kind of what we're getting to the point of model based definition. We want to get away from squiggles on a dead tree for manufacturing and inspecting our different parts. We want the information that is in our models to be carried over to our data management system so then we can use them in manufacturing and inspection. If you saw my video on export step files I talked about using AP 242 and how you can have semantic annotations what that means is that these different annotations and dimensions and geometric tolerances are machine readable so that your different manufacturing machines and your inspection machines are capable of reading this and the big point of MBD there is a study done by NIST and it found that it can reduce the design to manufacturing to inspection process by as much as 72 percent so if you're not using model based definition you are definitely uh, losing out on some improvements to your efficiency and productivity and reducing your time to market the last thing that i want to show in here if i go to 7c we have a dimension for the diameter of the hole in here. And let's say I wanted a dimension on this view as well. And I wanted to create it as a reference dimension. If I go to the annotations drop down menu and then choose reference dimension, I can choose, maybe I just want to use the entity itself. I can select this edge and then move my mouse out over here. And you can see the REF indicated in there. And let's say I wanted to have the diameter dimension instead. If I go to the orientation drop down list in the ribbon, I can change this to a diameter. Oh, let's see. Uh, for this one, I believe I can flip text somewhere in here, but usually 
I just select it and from the mini toolbar, which one is it? Flip arrows, there it is, flip text, getting it to the outside. And if I wanted to change the precision out to three places, I can do that as well. And that way I can create reference dimensions in, a t in addition to the regular standard dimensions I'm creating in my different combination states. I hope you enjoyed this video. For more information, please visit www.creowindchill.com. If you learned something from this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like this video, please click the subscribe button to be informed when new videos are uploaded. Thank you very much.